Okay, we got a 92 Sam bar here that uh, I'm having an issue with engine oil getting into the coolant. And I actually replaced the head on this thing a while ago and it didn't seem to solve the problem. So there's something more major with the truck. So unfortunately I didn't capture it on video because I wasn't really planning on doing this, but I've pulled the engine out, transmission's laying there. It actually only took about an hour and 45 minutes to pull it out, pretty easy job. This truck I've actually had a part from the frame off, did a complete paint job and everything on it. We'll go into that later when it's actually completed. But here's the engine. Uh, it's a bone stock little 660cc. And uh, somewhere in this engine lies a problem where I'm getting engine oil in the coolant. Now I have rebuilt one of these engines before on another vehicle that I had, a 94, and I sold that one and uh, it's been running flawless. Um, and I thought I'd document this so that if anybody's interested in trying this, maybe I can give you some pointers along the way or at least document what I've done and, uh, for your viewing pleasure. So let's see what happens. Okay, I figured it's a good time to stop the time lapse here. It's, doesn't take very much at all to hear these down. But anyway, th I've just got the head off. And if you guys have never opened up the head on one of these engines, they're very interesting how they seal and where I suspect I'm getting my issue. The oil comes out of the oil pump up through this hole. And where it hits the head is actually a hard stop. There's not a through hole there. The oil actually travels across over to this void space through the thickness of the head gasket and goes up this, sorry, up this hole right here. And that hole, actually, I'll put the head bolt in here. There's a little bit of clearance between the head bolt and the head. That's actually where the oil travels up through. It's very strange design. And as you can tell right here, it's very close clearance between the water jacket and the oil passage. This is the O-ring here in the head that seals around the oil passage. So I suspect that is where I'm getting my issue, is somewhere in there. Although I had this head machined and I just did this head gasket once and it does look to me like it is sealing very nicely around there. Likewise on the block. I'm going to pop this head gasket off. And one of the things I did not do when I rebuilt this head and put it back on was machine the block. And as I suspect, if you look closely, and I've seen other pictures of these, that is almost cathodic action where you're getting corrosion in the block. And I think that is actually where my leak is coming from, is where that seal on the, on the head there seals against the block. I think that is where the problem is. So this time I'm tearing the engine down completely. It was actually burning a little bit of oil, this engine. Uh, especially on startup until it got warm it burned quite a bit of oil so the bottom end is pretty tired I'm gonna be rebuilding it with new rings and everything uh, but this I suspect I'm gonna to have to get machined I'll take it to work and they can machine that block so that I have a nice clean surface on there for the new gasket to uh, stick to All right, we got the engine pulled apart. Uh, I stopped the video there a little bit because I was really struggling 
to get this last end cap out uh, for the crank. Reason is, is they have these um, seals that go in the whole length. It's like a, uh, an O-ring with a flat piece of rubber. And it was really stuck on there. So I ended up putting a bolt in the top of that and kind of prying it off with hitting it on uh, the screwdriver to pry it up and got it out. A uh, bit of a pain in the butt, but uh, I got her. Um, probably a good thing I pulled this engine apart. It's definitely tired and the bearings were at their last, these last legs. These, um, these motors are known for kicking out rods. So let's look at the uh, piston rods. Um, these ones down here, where is it, right here. These ones down here are the lower part of the cap and these are the, uh, the actually the rod part of the cap or the uh, rod part of the, uh, the upper. Anyway, if you look, the Babbitt is gone on all of these. They're all the copper showing. So those are done. Even the lower, uh, the cap, rod cap bearing has uh, got some scoring. Not too bad, but definitely the top ones are done. Moving over to the mains, same thing. The bottom main, which takes all the force of the, uh, the pistons coming down, uh, they're all worn down to the copper. The uppers are all pretty good. Thrust bearings, they seem to be fine. The uh, crankshaft, I don't know, it's, uh, can't really feel it, but it's definitely got some scoring on there on all of the, the mains and the, the throws. This one's not too bad. So I'm gonna take it to a shop and see if they can uh, just polish it because before I order parts, I gotta make sure I get the uh, right size if I have to get it polished and go undersized. If it's quite costly, I might end up just getting another crankshaft though to get one sent here to Canada is about a thousand dollars all in. The uh, seal for the, you see if you can see it here, it's actually caused quite a groove in the uh, seal there, the seal face from the rear seal. Uh, over to the pistons, you might have noticed in the video when I was uh, taking this apart, I uh, marked the, um, took a little pop mark, you can see three pop marks on there, so that's cylinder number three, because there are no markings on these things as to which cylinder they are, and you want to put them back in the same ones. So this is number three. The pistons, you can't go wrong. The pistons have got a little arrow on the head that points to the uh, number one, or to the crank pulley end of the engine, so you can't get that wrong. I suppose you could. Actual fact, uh, I did buy an engine that a guy put together and the, he had the pistons in backwards and it actually does hit the valves. So you don't want to do that. You want to get those pistons correct. So that's about it for now. The block, we sh I showed you the top of the block, the bottom. It's filthy dirty. You gotta give it a good clean. I'll take it to the machine shop, get them to, uh, to clean it and then um, machine the, the deck. Uh, and then I'm gonna do some measuring and see where that crank is at. So. That's about it for now. Uh, the next video will be uh, when the parts are all cleaned up and maybe ready for reassembly. A little bonus here for you. I couldn't help but throw this into this video just for fun. This is not out of a sandbar. This is actually out of a, uh, a Suzuki Carry, a 2000 Suzuki Carry, which is a 660cc three cylinder. And I bought this, uh, I bought the truck off of someone who had blown the engine up. And when I opened it up, this is what I was greeted to. I've never in all the engines I've worked on over the years and pulled apart and repaired and overhauled seen one with a connecting rod so bent and destroyed. It's, it's awesome. It's going on my wall of shame. I've gotten quite a collection for a wall of shame, but I uh, haven't put it up yet. And uh, this is the piston out of it. Half of it anyway. The engine was pretty much completely destroyed. The head was actually salvageable, minus two valves. I had to replace a couple of bent valves, but uh, yeah, pretty damn awesome. The truck's now running. I'm using it right now while the sandbar is uh, uh, getting fixed. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that.